Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Uh, welcome back to our Top 5 Fridays weekly ski industry news videos. Yep. Took a break last week. Um, our apologies. I don't even remember what was going on. Just too busy doing stuff. Yeah. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> these, these days and weeks just kind of blend together. Yeah, it's moving fast. I'm sure we were busy <laughs> doing something to do with skis. Yeah. Maybe snowboards, but probably skis. Yeah. Anyways, we're back. Um, it happens to be a very light week for news. Yeah, even considering ski season is yeah, ski season, upon us. Right. Yeah. Um, we got some racing this weekend, too. Yep. Um, so, yeah, but I guess before we get into the news, um, for those of you who follow our channel and watch our other content and stuff like that, um, you've probably been seeing the ski comparison videos going up. Um, we have just about wrapped up the men's ski comparisons um, but I thought you know we do have a couple more weeks to fit things in could do some into early December if we really need to so I thought we would just kind of give you the opportunity um, if we haven't done a comparison video yet that you'd like to see let us know yeah can't guarantee that we'll do it but it would also be interesting to see what we have that we haven't that hasn't made a list like a straggler. Oh, like what skis? Yeah. Just like specifically a... pick out skis that haven't been in any comparison videos. Right, and it'll be kind of a hodgepodge mix of them. But right. Like ones that have either slipped through the cracks or that we didn't get into inventory until recently or true. whatever the case may be. It would be interesting to see that list, I think. Well, let us know yeah. if you'd like to see that video. That's maybe, my vote. Maybe we'll do that <laughs> video. Thank you for your input, Bob. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Uh, and with that, I think we can get right into the news. Um, so first up, we have some news from the U.S. ski team. Um, I don't know if it's even really news. It's just the, the annual official announcement of who's on their team. Yeah. Um, which is, I guess, more important going into an Olympic season, you could say. Yeah. And, you know, I think the, the news of it is that there wasn't that much of a surprise. No. We, bo we both of us looked through, and I was trying to pull out a name that was a surprise to yeah. me but there weren't any surprises. Um, Bob, you had an interesting take on, uh, they also listed the staff, yeah. so the U.S. ski team staff, and you had uh, an interesting take that really good job security for the uh, the physio team and the yeah. doctors for the free ski halfpipe team. Yeah, and I mean, ski racing is <laughs> dangerous too, but you know, you, just see what these, broken up. <laughs> you see what these kids do, and I say kids because we notice a lot of their birth years are into the early 2000s yeah um that yeah like if you are in that department of healing broken athletes that's a good spot to be in <laughs> yeah. So, yeah i just loved your take though that was great job security yep for sure um so we threw up some of the some of the names not the complete list um if you're interested in checking out the the full list and all the staff and everything um we'll leave a link to that as we always do um, and that's it for the first topic yeah. of the week um, second topic of the week we're continuing kind of in the I guess ski racing world oh it's definitely ski racing yeah yeah oh, it totally yeah I don't know if it's like I don't know if it, it yeah it, it kind of <laughs> correlates to the first topic of the week um, ski racing.com has a interesting article kind of highlighting the debate over discontinuing parallel slalom um, we talked about this a little while back, kind of the, you know, the, the two schools of thought where the, where the discussion and, and where the debate is coming from is from a, from a spectator standpoint, it's extremely entertaining. From a competitor standpoint, it's like not exactly fair Yeah. because it's like impossible to set identical courses. Right. And, like, I'm definitely anti-discontinue. I like the parallel slalom. Yeah. I like the bracket aspect to it. It's fun to watch. Um, it's fun to watch. But even, like, from a racing standpoint, if everyone skis the same course, it could change over time. Yeah, like, conditions change. Conditions from change, From one yeah. to another. Uh -oh. So, I don't know. I think it's fine. Yeah, or, like, maybe keep it as a... As, like, an exhibition sport or something. Yeah. Like, if you don't want it to go to overall fist points. Yeah. You know, I could see that being kind of a a way to come to a collective agreement is 
don't just discontinue it. Just have it right. kind of be a separate thing. Yeah. No, but every I think everyone enjoys watching it, so they're trying to yeah draw that line between you know encouraging new viewers and excited viewers and you know fairness to athletes. Yeah. So yeah, that's a that's a tricky line. Yeah. So we'll see what's to come, and that happens to be the race this weekend. Cool. I don't know if I'm going to wake up early in the morning to watch it, but I'll be interested in seeing the replays. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, and no, Michaela Schifrin either. In, in the upcoming races. Yeah. So, kind of a bummer there. Um, and then sticking sort of in the ski racing world, now it's getting a little more vague, uh, but the FIS has announced what they're calling the Rainforest Initiative, um, and they're essentially trying to be the first climate climate positive international sports federation. It's a mouthful there. It's a lofty goal, too. Sure, yeah. Um, so essentially what they're doing is buying up uh, Peruvian rainforest land in an attempt to offset their carbon footprint, um, which I think is great. Yeah, and I think it's to no one's surprise that skiing isn't necessarily an environmentally friendly event, especially with the amount of like need. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, winter needs to be cold for snow, so obviously it, skiing is so dependent on it. So right. It makes sense that this would be one of those avenues that goes after that that offset, that yep. carbon neutrality. Yep, and we've talked about uh, Johan Eliash quite a bit yep. since he took over the job, um, and it definitely aligns with what we know about Johan. Uh, back in 2005, he bought up, actually purchased a logging company, and in doing so purchased, I think, 400,000 acres of yep. land in, in the rainforest. So obviously somebody that cares about conservation and environmentally friendly practices. Yeah, and I can't really wrap my head around that number, If it, like the half a million acres. Is that like a lot for the rainforest, or is that kind of a smaller to medium amount? That's a great question. That sounds like a lot. But I suppose might... we should have looked up the... Uh... Like, is it the size of Vermont, or is it... <laughs> like a... I don't know. <laughs> Hold on. We'll be right back. <laughs> uh, so we're back. Um... <laughs> Bob, to answer your question, the uh, the rainforest in totality encompasses approximately 1.2 billion, no, I'm sorry, 3 billion acres of vegetation. Okay. So in the grand scheme of thing, it's not like the entire rainforest, but feels still pretty significant. And then to put that further into perspective, uh, the state of Vermont is... Uh, 5.9 million acres. All right. So, like, one... Be like like Lamoille County. One fifteenth of the size of Vermont. Uh, The FIS now owns that size of rainforest. All right. Well, every every bit counts, right? You're welcome for the (laughs) in-depth research. Um, But, no, it's really cool. You know, I had had thought... um, Kind of my or one of my first reactions. Not that I don't uh, don't appreciate stuff like this and don't see the benefit of it, but I always like the word offset is always tough for me. Yeah, because it just feels like there's a limit to that. You know, like for carbon neutrality or or in this in this case, they're they want to be climate positive. Like, does does buying just a bunch of rainforest does that count um technically clearly it does but there's a limit to that you know there's only there's a finite amount of rainforest so at some point if both if if the size of ski racing kept scaling at some point you would run out of the asset that you were using to offset that right so well they need to diversify and right get into solar and wind and hydro yeah, right. Stuff like that. Right. So but anything just, is just over. I'm just over <laughs> overthinking things <laughs> drastically at this point. Um, but that's what we're here for. Yeah, I think there's a feeling of helplessness too. If you're sure. if you're involved, if your career is based around a, a sport that 
by its nature relies on winter, right. isn't necessarily environmentally friendly, I'm right. sure you're just looking for everything you can do. Right. So, you, you know, it's not like you can say, well, let's run, let's just all of a sudden install, install solar panels and when to run our chairlifts. Like, it just doesn't work like that. Right. So you got to do something. At least logistically a lot more challenging. Right. To, like, install a bunch of windmills. Right. Instead yeah. of just, like, handing somebody a check. Correct. Yeah, it's easier. So. I mean, kudos to the FIS. I feel like I'm being really negative. Right. But just, just thinking <laughs> out loud um, is what I'm doing. Um, and then fourth topic of the week. Uh, we actually did something similar to this a few years ago. Um, so I'll try and find a link to that, and I'll leave it in the description um, right next to this. The Washington Post has a cool little kind of instructional article um, on how to improve your ski photography. An interesting source for ski t photography. Sure. Yeah. Not, not what I would have guessed, <laughs> I guess. Um, but yeah, content is king, you know, they're, yep. they're just looking for, for that content. Yep. Um, so it's pretty cool. They, they have a couple of pre professional photographers that they're kind of interviewing and then getting quotes from, um, talk a lot about lighting and framing and, and communication with the person that you're shooting with, mm -hmm. which Bob, you've been in a lot of, a lot of ski photo shoots now yep. and you know, that commu communication is very important. Yeah. And I think that the biggest difference between what you end up seeing is in the final product and what your experience is as both photographer and model, I guess, is that it's a lot less exciting to be in the photograph in the photograph aspect versus what it looks like. So like the photographers do a really good job of making it look like you're capturing this moment. Yeah. Like it's impressive. Yep. As to the actual experience of going through it, which like isn't skiing. Yeah, ski photo shoots are, like, really boring for the skier yeah. but most of the time. I mean, it's in the process is interesting. Yeah. If you're going into it with the attitude that this is a ski day, you're going to be pretty severely disappointed. Yeah, and specifically photos. Right. You know, I think our film shoot days are a lot different. Yeah. A lot more fun just chasing each other around with cameras and yeah. stuff like that. But, yeah, still photography is, is tough. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot of standing around, as Bob can attest to, and I can too, because I'm on both sides of the lens. Right. And it's just interesting to to how those things like the lighting and the staging really make such a big difference. Oh yeah. No, it's hugely important. Um so yeah, check that out. You know, you don't have to have a fancy camera either. They talk a lot about smartphone use, which I mean, I never take good pictures with my phone. Like No. <laughs> like I'm just not good at it. No, you should no, you got to read this I'll article. Read the article. Okay. <laughs> Um, and then with that, we have our edits of the week. Um, so first, this is more like a, a full film. Um, we have Tales of Cascadia from Blank Collective. Um, we will, if you're in the Stowe area, we are doing a showing of the Solomon Quality Ski Tour. Quality Ski Time, time. Tour. Okay. Yeah. Quality Ski Time Tour. Solomon QST Film yep. Tour. Um, we are doing a showing uh, next Wednesday, so Wednesday of next week, the 17th, I believe that is, um, and that is one of the films that we'll be showing, so come, come join if you're in the area. Um, and then we have a short film called Good Luck um, from, gosh, three of my favorite skiers, Torn Yader-Wallace, Jossie Wells, Chris Logan, and Burke Irving. Do you know all four of those names, Bob? I never heard of Burke. That's, that would, if, yep, I would have guessed. Yeah. He's a little younger than those other three. Maybe about the same as Torrin, but Torrin's a little more well-known. Um, but, yeah, three or four unbelievable skiers, all very, very technically gifted and also with some great style. Yeah. They all have their each, each have their own unique style. Speaking of somebody with his own unique style, it's pretty obvious to pick this guy out. Uh, we got another edit from Candide Thovex. Some laps in the Crans Montana Park. Yep, pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, you know, still got it. Still got it. I don't think anybody out there didn't think <laughs> that he still had it. Although this is, you know, this is a little different than what we've been seeing out of Candide recently because it is more park skiing. Yeah. You know, I think people are accustomed to ski seeing Candide ripping around his the the natural terrain of his home mountain. Um, but yeah, you know, if you think back to Candide when he kind of broke onto the onto the ski world, it was mm. with his park skiing. 
And so that's what he was known for originally, and that's kind of what I mean by he still got it. So, and my favorite part at the end of him straight lining a mogul field. Yeah, I watch that all day. Which is so hard. Yep. Like he makes it look so easy. Yeah, no problem. I've seen some kind of like contradictory comments on his videos. Like that's e like, that's easy. Like show us that you can turn. Right. And like, no. Rest assured that <laughs> Candy can make like proper mogul turns right. if he wants to. He can just also straight line through them on like one twenty underfoot right. outer skis. The, the the scope of speed is what's so impressive because he's with the general public and right. just how fast he goes past them is the most impressive thing. Yep. So pretty cool. Um, Bob probably no skiing this weekend. Not this weekend. Looks could, like next weekend. Could though. go down to Killington this weekend. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna be doing some dry land skiing and, and training with some of the Green Mountain Academy folks tomorrow. Nice. So that'll be sort of skiing. Yep. Um, and yeah, fingers crossed. If you guys can knock on wood for us and, and keep those fingers crossed, the temperatures drop down. Uh, if, if they do, next week when we sit down for Top 5 Fridays, we we'll, have we'll have some skiing footage yep. in there too. So, yeah, fingers crossed, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye.